Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, in 2015, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, gave us the encyclical letter Laudato Si, reminding all of us believers of our Christian duty to be good stewards of creation. Tonight, on this fifth anniversary of Laudato Si, we gather together in prayer praising God for the gift of this world, acknowledging our collective failure to be its good stewards, and asking Him to grant us the grace to honor our covenant with Him and will the entire creation. Let us pray then that this celebration of Confession Picati and Laudis may inaugurate our invigorated love for God and all creatures capable of renewing us and the entire world. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who have commanded the human race to bear the burden of labor, grant that the work we are beginning may bring progress in this life, and by your favor advance the spread of the kingdom of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was no field shrub on earth, and no grass of the field had sprouted, for the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil, but a stream was welling up out of the earth 
and was watering all the surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man out of clay, of the ground, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and he placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With a tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and bad. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the Son of man? that you should care for him. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims, the paths of the seas. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name is all the earth. Dear sisters and brothers, today we celebrate Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si in a quite unique way. This year, we celebrate its fifth anniversary of writing and the light of the current COVID-19 pandemic, which we are now all experiencing, the Vatican Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development has decided to turn the traditional Laudato Si week into a Laudato Si year-long celebration, which runs from today up until next year. And the message for all of this is very clear. When our world gets sick, we also get sick. Pope Francis on March 27 has this to say about the COVID-19 pandemic in his Urbi et Orbi reflection. In this storm, the facade of those stereotypes with which we camouflage our egos always worrying about our image, has fallen away, uncovering once more that blessed common belonging of which we cannot be deprived, our belonging as brothers and sisters. And yes, in the middle of that dark, empty piazza of San Pietro, Pope Francis led us into a humble act of penance while we watch him lightly soak wet with rain from our homes. His message was turned into one great confession of sin when he said that we have been greedy for profit. We let ourselves get caught up in things and lured away by haste. We did not stop at God's reproach to us. We were not shaken awake by wars or injustice across the world nor did we listen to the cry of the poor or of our failing planet. We carried on regardless, thinking we would stay healthy in a world that was sick. I must admit that I was moved into tears while I watched and listened to his message. And this is also the same reason why we are all here today, even virtually, for this Confessio Peccati, for together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, 
we all humbly admit our many faults against our common home and ask for God's forgiveness and healing. We cannot deny that the COVID-19 pandemic has awakened in us that sense that indeed we are all in this world together. It took a one invisible enemy to remind us all of how vulnerable we all are. That even amidst all our modern technologies and research, we could all still be gone in an instant. For this world is never our own. The world owns us altogether. Now, even amidst all these uncertainties, we try to slowly bring ourselves into this new normal. Take note, the challenge is for us not to go back to our old prearranged lives, but to live our lives with a new perspective and vision. And this is only possible if we learn the true meaning of contemplation. In the book of Genesis, we heard how God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. And this is exactly what contemplation is all about. To gaze at everything and to see it with God's eyes. This is perhaps what led St. Francis of Assisi to compose that poem which served as the inspiration for the encyclical of our Holy Father on our common home. Laudato si, o mi signore. St. Francis, while looking at our earth, only as a praise for God on his lips, as he looked with great wonder on all God has made. You know, a more popular English song has a similar tune and note. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Dear friends, Pope Francis is correct in reminding us to seize this time of trial as a time of our choosing. A time to choose what matters and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It is a time to get our lives back on track with a much closer bond with nature and of our brothers and sisters. Perhaps it is indeed true that sometimes we need to get sick before we start feeling better. We all hope that once the cure to this pandemic is found and we are once back on track, we shall look back into 2020 as a time of great tribulation, but a time for a wonderful realization that if we all move together in unison, we could all see a more beautiful world and a just, humane society. Full of trust, let us turn to our loving Creator, God, who is merciful and compassionate. From Him, we ask for repentance as we humbly confess our sins against Him, His creation, and against one another. By virtue of our vocation, consecrated women and men are charged to respond to the signs of the times. However, we have failed to hear your voice in the cry of nature, which is wounded by humanity's inability to fulfill its vocation to be the custodian of all creation. For this, and for all our failings, we ask for your pardon.
Creator God, your Son Jesus, spread the message of justice, love, and peace when He lived on this earth. In our consecration, we, men and women religious, committed to make present this work in our time. However, by being lacking in promoting the goodness of creation, we fell short in making this world grow with justice and love. For this and for all our failings, we ask for your pardon, Lord. sacrifice, this may become the body and blood of your Son. However, too often, we have sacrificed instead the source of these gifts to the God of modernity and development. We have not cared for them or for those who derive benefit from their goods. For this and for all our failings, we ask for your pardon, Lord. By responding to your invitation to consecrated life, we have chosen to follow your son's prophetic ministry. However, we have shied away from denouncing the harm inflicted on creation. We have chosen to remain silent. For these and for all our failings, we ask your pardon, Lord.
our collective sins against nature have brought many disasters and our country is not foreign to this reality. How many have suffered and died because we have not been good stewards of your gift? We have contributed to the destruction of biodiversity and to climate change among others. For this and for all our failings, we ask for your pardon, Lord. Father of all, creator and ruler of the universe, you entrusted your world to us as a gift. Forgive us for the times when we fail to live in right relationship with you, with ourselves, with one another, and with creation. Help us to imitate your love for the human family by recognizing that we are all connected to our brothers and sisters around the world, to those in poverty, impacted by environmental devastation and to future generations. Help us to hear the cry of those in poverty and the cry of the earth, so that we may together care for our common home. Amen. We trust that God never abandoned us, despite all our failings and wrongdoings. Assured of His providence, let us praise Him in the words of our Blessed Mother.
gathering all our prayers into one, let us pray to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Provident God, creator of the universe, you graciously give us all good gifts. Teach us to care for the earth so that we may willingly share the gifts of your goodness with all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the ears of your mercy be open, O Lord, to the prayers of those who call upon you, and that you may grant what they desire. Have them ask what is pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down in you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.